no ballast weight versus 10 kilos of ballast weight versus 20 kilos of ballast weight versus 30 kilos of ballast weight. How much of a difference do you think there will be between the lap times? For this experiment, I'm going to be driving cart number 10 for all of the sessions. We're going to be driving the World Cup layout. So without further ado, let's compare all four laps. The first three corners are high speed and they're taken flat out. So having more weight can actually give you a bit more grip. As we pause it at the apex point, 65 and 75 are neck and neck, but you can see 85 and 95 are already lagging behind. We've got a short straightaway followed by turn three, heading into turn four, the fast right-hander, actually with the lap on 95 and even 85, I was able to take it just about flat out. You can see already 65 and 75 comfortably pulling ahead. As we come now to the high speed stuff, at the fast left-hander. And this was the first corner where I really felt the negative effects of the ballast weight because there was no rotation to the left on the laps with 85 and 95. The cart was actually understeering. That's because it was completely unbalanced. Subsequently, I got really bogged down on exit. So my exit speed was severely compromised. And just to give you some perspective, as we reach the end of the back straight, on the lap of 65, we hit the blue and white strip, whereas we're two or three cart lengths behind on the laps with 85 and 95. Keep a close eye on the top right-hand corner on the lap of 75, because we're only about a cart's length away. As we now get to the apex point, the gap between 65 and 75 isn't so bad, you know, but we're only halfway through the lap now, and we're approaching our second hairpin turn, which is a slightly slower speed corner. Again, we have the same problem on the laps of 85 and 95, where the rotation was horrible, we get bogged down on exit, and subsequently, I've pulled ahead by a mile now. Now, this final sector is really where the no ballast weight lap shines and pulls away the most. It's because the corners are medium speed, so you really have to lean your body weight uh, out of the corners. So as we go through the fast right, and now the fast left, this is where I'm pulling ahead on the lap with 65 and 75, you could say, but really getting bogged down on the laps below of 85 and 95. By the time we exit the final corner, 65 is at the exit blue and white strip, whereas 85 and 95 are still coming out the final two corners. We have a long straightaway all the way up to the line, and this puts into perspective how much time you lose when you add ballast weight. So here are all of the session laps. And it's interesting to observe that for every 10 kg of ballast weight that I added, I was either 7 tenths or 8 tenths slower. Now the biggest challenge which I faced when I added more and more ballast weight is that the cart would understeer more and more through the left hand turns. Because the ballast weight holder is located on the left hand side of the cart, by the time I added 30 kg, Whenever I was cornering on a left-hand turn, you could feel the force created by the ballast weight, slowing the cart down and making it difficult to reach the apex point. Perhaps a technique I could have used to overcome this would be to lean into the corner. But let's save that experiment for another video. Now in your experience, how much of an effect has ballast weight had on your lap times? And I'd love to know what techniques you've used to overcome this in the comments below. Now, if you did enjoy the video, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe. But until the next video, guys, keep karting and carry on.